Hi, Hi guys. guys, welcome, welcome back. back. So we're going to recap a little bit on uh, what we have learned last week, which is uh, the energetics of a solution, yep. right? So what happens is now we're going to get an ionic solid and we're going to throw it into water and we're going to see what's the energy changes, okay. right? So the first thing we'll look at is actually the enthalpy change of solution. Yep. Uh, the definition, once again, is to look at one more, more, one more of solute. You're going to dissolve it in a solvent, which typically is going to be water, awesome. and you're going to form an infinitely dilute solution under the standard conditions here, yep. right? So if I were to use NaCl as an example, so we're going to take the solid uh, solute, okay? Okay, NaCl. Uh, tell me how you're going to write the equation. So you're going to dissolve in water. So mm. usually we will just write plus AQ to represent mm -hmm. it dissolving in water, mm -hmm. right? So when sodium chloride is a soluble salt, it dissolves mm. in water, mm. right? It will become its ions, Na plus aqueous mm -hmm. and Cl minus aqueous. That's right. So I'm going to use a, um, a diagram to represent the dissolution process, sure. right? So the ionic solid is over here and you dissolve it and it's going to give you your uh, ions and these ions are all surrounded by water, yep. uh, which is a process of uh, dissolution, yes. right? Yep. Um, unfortunately, this whole process doesn't just happen instantaneously. Yep. You can broadly divide this into a two-step process. Yes. So the first step is actually to go and break all the ionic bonds inside the solid so that we're going to get their separated ions yep. and after which I'm going to throw them into water. Yep. Uh, in the context, we're going to surround them with water, water molecules, molecules. Yep. right? So um, each of these steps is associated with an energy change. Yep. Can you run us through the first one, Mr. Right. Yeah. So the first one involves breaking the ionic bonds and mm -hmm. separating the ions, right? Mm -hmm. So that has to do with uh, lattice energy. Right. So the definition of lattice energy is on the screen. Mm -hmm. Essentially, is the heat in, uh, evolved when one more of an ionic solid mm -hmm. is formed from its constituent gaseous ions, mm -hmm. right? Under standard conditions. That's okay. Right. So if you were to write an equation for uh, sodium chloride, mm -hmm. right, it will be Na plus gas plus mm -hmm. Cl minus gas, producing the NaCl solid. That's right. Right now, the right. So the magnitude of the lattice energy is now dependent on two factors. It's mm -hmm. dependent on the product of charges. Mm -hmm. It's also inversely related to the sum of ionic radius, right? As mm. seen on the equation. Right. Okay. So, but if you realize. Uh, lattice energy is about forming an ionic solid, mm -hmm. but the dissolution process is actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm breaking up the ionic solid into gaseous ions. Mm -hmm. So this process will actually be negative Le. Right? Now, Mr. Leung, after I break up the gaseous ions, mm. what do I need to do next? So I need to surround them with water molecules, okay. right? This process is known as hydration, okay. uh, which will lead me to the next uh, enthalpy change, okay. which is the enthalpy change of hydration. So just to remind you again, what's the definition? We are looking out for a specific gaseous ion now, not both of them, mm -hmm. either just a cation or an anion, okay. and we're going to throw them in water. So we dissolve them in a large amount of water. Once again, always under standard conditions. Yep. Now I'm going to use uh, Na plus as an example. Mm -hmm. So by definition, we are going to uh, dissolve one more of sodium plus ions, mm -hmm. right? And of course, you say throw in water, you must put it in AQ, right? Yep. And of course, you're going to end up with the hydrated version, which we call this the aqueous ions. Yep. Now, for hydration, it is going to be dependent on this thing called the charge density of the ion. And we learn it from a chemical bonding. Yep. That it depends on this uh, very important formula, which is charge over the size, yep. right? Now, coming back to the diagram over here, so these two would simply just be the hydration uh, of the respective ions, yep. right? So for the sodium, it's going to get its own hydration. Mm -hmm. Its chloride is going to go and get its own hydration as well, okay? So essentially, when I look at this whole diagram itself, right, I have um, accidentally formed an energy cycle. So you can see that the center of my cycle is in the middle, and therefore, we're going to apply Hess's law. And that is why we end up with this equation over here. Right. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, even though I'm a man of shortcuts, <laughs> there's no shortcut for this particular formula. Okay. If you guys have any suggestions, please tell us in class. All right, we'll be more than happy to feature you next time. So we're going to cover new content now. Okay. okay, we're going to look at this thing called the born haber cycle, mm -hmm. right? Now, born haber cycle usually applies only for ionic substances, yeah. right? And the whole idea over here is to connect the enthalpy change of formation of an ionic substance with its lattice energy, okay. right? So let's start off with the first one, uh, formation. Mr. Yeah. Yap, show you a challenge. Give me the equation again. Okay, so, so formation is to form one more of a, a compound in a specified state from its constituent element. So mm -hmm. it's made out of sodium, mm -hmm. right? So sodium in the solid state, okay. standard conditions. As well as? Chlorine. Okay. Gas, Cl2. Cl2, right? Yep. Okay. Right, and to balance it, mm -hmm. now bear in mind you are producing one more of a compound, so mm -hmm. the coefficient in front of a compound must be one, and mm -hmm. therefore you have to write a half in front of the Cl2. That's right. So this is called the enthalpy change of formation. Yep. Right. Now I'm going to link it, uh, or rather I'm going to uh, uh, try to write out the equation for lattice energy okay. now. So once again, run us through it. Oh, me again? Okay. Of course. So lattice energy is to form one more of an ionic solid from its constituent gaseous ions. Mm -hmm. So NaCl is made of Na plus mm -hmm. and Cl minus, right? So mm -hmm. it's just Na plus and Cl minus. Both of them are in the gaseous state. That's right. Now, if I look at this, right, you, you say that I want to link them together, yes. right? It's not a complete cycle right. yet. Something is missing on the left, right? That's right. So we're going to try to link it up together. Can sure. you tell us how to do that? Oh, 
looks very complicated. I think they involve more than one step, right? That's right. So the sodium solid, you're trying to turn it into the ions yes. in the gaseous state. Uh, the chlorine gas, you're also trying to turn it into uh, your chloride ions. Yep. So this one over here is going to involve multiple steps. Yep. And before we introduce uh, the, the, the complete cycle, I think we need to look at certain definitions, yes. right? Okay. Oh, definitions again. Oh, hi, Mr. Yap. What significance are you up to this time? Oh, Mr. Leong, I'm trying to atomize. Can't you see that? But you're really so short, why must you optimize further? Oh my god, Mr. Leong, did you hear something? Uh, no, what? It's my heart breaking. Okay, moving on. Hey, can you pull uh, me up, please? You, you just have a backbone, is it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's take a look at the standard entropy change of atomization, mm -hmm. right? So this is one of those that we need to go and complete our bond haber cycle, right? Okay. okay, so let's look at the definition. Uh, we are going to take a look at um, one more of gaseous atoms uh, being formed again. Right, and it must come from its elements this time under standard conditions. So we illustrate this with a few examples. The first of which is going to be a sodium. So remember, uh, we are, based on definition, we are trying to form one more of gaseous atom. So we must start off with always the product. Yep. And we want to take a look at what is the usual uh, element. So yep. in this case, what will it be? Right, so sodium under standard condition of 29 Kelvin and 1 bar, it mm. must be a sodium metal, right? So it's solid state. That's right. Okay, now how about bromine then? So I'm trying to form one more of gaseous bromine. Yep. Where must it come from? From a bromine uh, molecule, but under standard condition of 29 Kelvin 1 bar, I hope you guys remember your group seven, uh, group 17 chemistry. Mm -hmm. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature and pressure. So bear in mind, this yep. is a liquid. Right. Okay, and how about for phosphorus? So once again, I'm trying to form one more of gaseous phosphorus atoms. Yeah. But phosphorus is a bit tricky. You guys mm. might not have seen this before. Mm. Uh, phosphorus exists as a tetratomic molecule at uh, standard conditions, or P4. Mm -hmm. So just take note, you have to balance it with a, a quarter in front. That's great. Okay, now what about, let me show you a challenge, okay? What about if I ask you for neon gas? So mm -hmm. let's write down one more. Yes. NEG, right? Uh, one more of neon gas. Who should mm. it be formed from? Neon. Ah. So mm. neon is also a gas at room temperature and pressure, right? Right. And more importantly, this is? A monoatomic uh, gas, right? Monoatomic. it's a noble gas. That's right. So, it's essentially the same thing, right? NEG become NEG. So what do you expect the entropy change to be? Uh, zero. Okay, so therefore in this case, if you ever have a monoatomic uh, element, uh, the entropy change of atomization for that particular element is going to be zero, yeah. right? So this is usually the case for noble gases yeah. because they are the ones that are usually existing as monoatomic. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, one important thing that I noticed over here, right, Mr. Yap, is that all these entropy changes of atomization are all positive. Like, yeah. Can you shed some, shed some light why this is so? Uh, because our entropy change of atomization is an endotomic process because it involves breaking of bonds, could either be metallic or covalent bonds in nature. So that's why uh, it's always a positive value. Very insightful. Now the second entropy change we're going to look at for bond haber cycle is going to be the ionization energy. Mm -hmm. So this one shouldn't come as a surprise to you because you have learned this in atomic structure, yep. right? Uh, but just to recap, if you are looking at the first ionization energy, uh, we are looking out for the number of uh, the energy absorbed when you re remove one more of electrons from one more of gaseous atoms to form a singly charged uh, uh, gaseous cations, yep. right? So a very mouthful, but we'll use an example. Uh, if I look at calcium, we start off with a calcium atom and you want to remove one electron. So therefore you're gonna end up with a cation that's singly charged. And if I look at the ionization energy, right? Mm -hmm. It is actually a endothermic process. Why is that so, Mr. Yap? Right, so because you are removing the electron from the atom, so you must free the electron from the whole of the nucleus. You need to overcome some electrostatic attraction. Energy is needed, endothermic, in, that's why. That's right. So uh, what happens if I decide to look at the second ionization energy? Okay, always asking the insightful questions. Yeah, so for the second ionization energy, is the energy needed to remove one more of electrons mm -hmm. from one more of a singly charged gaseous cation mm -hmm. to form one more of a doubly charged gaseous cation. That's so right. in terms of the equation, it's whatever Mr. Long is writing on the screen now. That's right. All right, Mr. Long. so you asked me what second IE, right? Mm. Can I ask you back what is third IE? Uh, sure, but I think I should pose this question to the students, right? So you will answer it in class. But what about fourth IE? You will answer it in class. Fifth IE? You will also answer it in class. Oh, oh, Mr. Long students, please prepare the answers for all these. Mm -hmm. huh? We will ask you in class, okay? Sure. <laughs> Alright, so the next thing we're going to look at is electron affinity. Mm -hmm. Now, electron affinity essentially is the opposite of ionization. Ionization removes the electron, electron affinity puts the electron back in. Okay. So first electron affinity is the energy release when one mole of electron is added to a mole of gaseous atom mm -hmm. to form a mole of uh, singly charged gaseous anions. All right? Now, if you were to look at the example below, mm -hmm. right, so oxygen atom taking in one mole of electron mm -hmm. to form O minus. Mm -hmm. right? 
Now, Mr. Long, you will notice that the first electron affinity is exothermic in nature. That's right. Could you share some light? Okay, sure. So it's exothermic. The reason why is because we are pushing electrons into the atom, right? Yep. So in order for the atom to hold the new electron in place, it definitely must form some electrostatic attraction yep. between the nucleus and this incoming electron, right? So uh, as a result, this feels like it's a bond forming yep. process, and that is why this is an exothermic uh, uh, reaction. All right, okay. that's good. Now, in terms of the second electron affinity, mm -hmm. so if you look at uh, O minus as a sample, so you're mm -hmm. going to put in another electron into the O minus mm -hmm. to make it O2 minus, mm -hmm. but you will realize that the second uh, electron affinity is positive in nature. Mm. Now, Mr. Leung, why do you think is this so? I must shed some light now again, yes. right? Okay, so um, obviously, it, I mean, you might think that the second EA might have the same idea as the first because you're trying to form electrostatic attraction, right? But the problem over here is that you notice that there is actually two negatively charged species coming very close together. Yep. And what do you think will happen? Negative, negative, repel. Lo. Repel. So therefore, if you insist on this reaction happening, right, you say that I need to supply some energy to push them close together yep. before they can collide and they can react. Yeah, so you need to force them together, you need to uh, invest energy into it, therefore EA2 would be endothermic in nature. That's right. So in fact, EA2, EA3, EA4 and so on will always be endothermic. So only first EA is usually exothermic for non-metals. That's nice. Yep. So after learning all these definitions, right? Oh, we so can many definitions in this level. Okay, uh, so we can finally connect our bond haver cycle, right? So okay. I think our job just now was to try and connect all these elements into their glaciers ions. Yes. Yeah, so can you now help me to uh, connect the dots? Help you, uh, mm. sure. Mm. So for sodium solid, you mm. first need to make it into a sodium gaseous atom, so NAG. Okay. Then after you make it into NAG, you can just remove one electron from it to get mm. Na+. Plus, so okay. that, right? So that's what, that. Now in terms of the non-metal, mm. you need to make once again uh, it into an atom, chlorine mm -hmm. atom. Mm -hmm. Then the electron lost by sodium would be forced into the chlorine atom mm. to make it in the CR minus. Okay. Yep. So in terms of the energy changes wise, you tell me that the sodium become the gaseous atom. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of enthalpy change am I looking at here? Uh, enthalpy change of atomization. That's right. Atomization of your sodium yep. uh, 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 metal, right? Yep. yep. How about turning it into the ions? First IE. First IE. That's right. Because you are removing electrons. Yep. Now conversely, for the non-metal, the chloride, uh, sorry, the chlorine uh, diatomic molecule become chloride atom. Yes. Uh, atomization as well. Atomization again, right? And how about uh, from chlorine into the ion? Uh, it's the opposite of uh, taking out electrons, so it's EA putting in the electron. That's right. So there you have it. This is the complete bond haber cycle. Yep. Right? Uh, but this is not all because sometimes instead of doing the cycle, they might choose to do the energy level yeah, diagram, right? Yes. So we're going to run you through this using the acronym over here, which is called FAIL, F A I L. Huh, okay. I learned already with Phil Chemistry. No? Uh, won't, uh, if you learn already, then you, you won't fail. La. Never learn, then we'll fail, is it? Yes, correct. <laughs> okay. yeah. So uh, we're going to take a look at what does the fail actually represent. Okay. Now, first of which, the F stands for formation. Yep. Okay. So we're going to start off our energy cycle with the, uh, with the zero energy level, uh, which this always represents the elemental form. Yep. Right? So uh, I assume that your ionic substance is given by Mx over here. Uh, M is the metal and X is the non-metal, which I'm going to assume that it's going to exist as a diatomic molecule under standard conditions. So um, we're going to also assume that that formation is going to be exothermic. Yep. So I'll write out the energy level first, right? For the reactants going downwards towards the products. That is your F. Okay. okay. Uh, can you run me through A then, Mr. Yap? Right, so A stands for atomization. Usually mm -hmm. we will just do it uh, atomization on the metal first, followed mm -hmm. by the non-metal. So let's sure. atomize the M first. Okay, so, so atomize MS, M. Okay, we're going to change to MG. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's then, what you see over here, right? Yep. yep. Okay, then after you atomize the metal, mm. you atomize the non-metal. Mm -hmm. right? Do it systematically. Okay. Right? So after uh, you should represent it on the screen, right? half X2 become XG. Mm. Right? Now after you atomize the metal and non-metal, the mm. next one is I, right? Ionization. Yep. So you need to make it into ions. Mm -hmm. So let's make, uh, we remove the electron from the metal first. So mm -hmm. that's first IE. Mm -hmm. Now the electron is produced, please remember to write it. Sure. Right? The electron produced, uh, lost by the metal, will now be added into the non-metal. Okay. So the non-metal will take in the electron that's first EA. Mm -hmm. right? Remember EA is an exothermic process, so please remember to point it down. Mm. So now what you have left with is the gaseous ions, right? Mm. So what's the last arrow, Mr. Leo? Uh, it's going to be called lattice energy, yep. right? So that's going to be the L of the fail, la, yep. right? Now, um, if I look at this over here, right, there's something a little bit different, okay, uh, of which we're going to look at this atomization of the, uh, the, the non-metal, yeah. right? Uh, because normally they don't usually give you this inside your question. Yep. Uh, what do they normally give you? Uh, usually they don't give you anything. You're expected to know where to find it from. Okay, so turns out we have to use the idea of bond energy. Bond energy, which yeah. is, can be found inside your data booklet, yes. right? Uh, but one problem about the bond energy uh, is this. Uh, let's write out the equation and see what's the problem. Sure. Okay, can so, you help me out with that? Yeah, so the definition of bond energy is the average energy needed to break one more of a gaseous covalent bond, mm -hmm. right? So the, the number in front of the reactant must be one because it's one more of a bond in the reactant. That's right. right? But if you realize, 
the equation representing the atomization of X, mm -hmm. right? is not the same as the equation representing the bond energy, right? Mm -hmm. What's the difference, Mr. Long? So this one only requires you to have one X atom, yep. but for bond energy, it's actually going to give me two, yep. right? So what's the consequence then? You need to halve it, essentially. That's right. So I need to halve everything. So half here, this one becomes a one, and this one will become a half yep. over here, right? Yep. So that's exactly matching up to this equation, which means that if I try to look at the atomization of X, it is essentially the same thing as half of the bond energy yep. for your X2. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, drawing all this is good. Yep. At the end of the day, I still need to use an equation to connect all these entropy changes together, right? Mm -hmm. So what's next? All right, your favorite. Clockwise okay. equals to anti-clockwise, which is right. Hessel law. Right. So I think over here is pretty straightforward. You tell me that uh, the center of a clock is here, okay. right? And we're going to look at all the clockwise arrows, which I hope is not too hard. It's going to be looking like this. Okay. So you're going to add up all these entropy changes that I've highlighted for you. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be equated to the only anti-clockwise uh, arrow that you see uh, over here. That is written in green. So yeah. just equate these two equations together uh, and probably you'll be able to find out the unknown, yeah. which is usually what the question wanted. Yeah. So with that, that's it for bond haber uh, level, energy level diagram. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try more questions to deepen our understanding. Okay. See right. you in class. Making sense beyond simple solutions. <laughs> <laughs>